and tonight we're going to talk about the updates on COVID-19, the coronavirus. Happy St. Patrick's Day to each and every one of you. Thank you to all my moderators, my Patreon supporters, my channel members, and all the great Duty Ron family that has assembled here on St. Patrick's Day evening, an unprecedented St. Patrick's Day without a parade in Manhattan. Yes, indeed, ladies and gentlemen, first time in history going back many, many years that there is not a St. Patrick's Day parade in Lower Manhattan. Uh, good to see you, Dookie. Thank you so much, Dookie4000. Uh, uh, Daphne is in the building, C-Y-N-T. Uh, e Iska Chapa, I know I might have messed that up. Dorney Color, thank you so much for being on in on the broadcast. I appreciate each and every one of you is being in here. I'm going to just close that out, make this a little bit better. Guys, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel. If you haven't subscribed, hit the notification bell, share onto all your social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, uh, share it on out, and let's get the message out there to everybody. Tonight, we're going to speak about the updates with uh, coronavirus. This is Unprecedented, uncharted waters. Gina, thank you for coming. Laura Bruno, great to see you. Red Lotus, Trevor, everybody is here. I appreciate you guys coming in. Uh, we definitely are in uncharted waters here, but I do have faith in the powers that be. Uh, I think our president is on top of things. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure to get this right. And I think through our state, local, and federal uh, branches of the government, I have confidence that we will um we will prevail we will handle this uh, this outbreak this pandemic uh like there's no tomorrow and um i'm gonna let you listen to uh two days ago uh actually just yesterday we listened uh to the audio of the governor of new jersey a very very well put together um jersey governor and I got to tell you, Governor Murphy impressed me. I don't know about you guys, uh, but for those of you who are in on the broadcast, we listened to the audio of Governor Murphy, and I want I want to hear that again. I want you guys to actually see it um, and just give you guys a little bit of a visual of how well the state of New Jersey, the state of New York, the tri-state area here, and all states across America uh, are coming together to try to get this right. Um, you know, we know that there's going to be a lot of people who are, will be out of jobs and I'm sorry, just believe that you lost your job, but that's going to be times thousands. There'll be thousands of people that will be jobless, but it looks like the president is trying to knock out a thousand dollar stimulus package, uh, that I heard today. If you guys are, um, if you guys are in the, um, uh, in the mix, there was a, an update news conference today uh, a live news conference. So if you guys haven't seen that, go and watch it. There's a whole package that they're going to be putting together. But let me let me segue over to this scene. Give me two seconds. I know it's dark right now. I'm not going to leave you in the dark that long. I just got to segue over to it. And let's take a peek at this and listen in to Governor Murphy. Zakia Smith-Ellis, Adjutant General Jamal Beal, Health Commissioner, who is familiar to everybody in the state at this point, Judy Persichelli, uh, Commissioner of Education, uh, Dr. Lamont Repolet, and Superintendent of the State Police, Colonel Pat Callahan, as well as the First Lady and others on our team in this room, including the Director of the Office of Homeland Security, uh, Jared Maples. Uh, so we this have received word uh, that an additional 80 residents have tested positive for coronavirus bringing our statewide total to 178. And as usual in these briefings, Judy will go through some of the details, including uh, the geographies of these cases. These numbers prove the necessity of our efforts to slow the spread of coronavirus and to aggressively move to a policy of social distancing. By the way, thank you and to your colleagues. Thank you. I, this is very good information. He covers a lot here. Today, I am signing an executive order stating that effective Wednesday, March 18th, all New Jersey schools will be closed. 
And while this closure will be for at least two weeks, they will remain closed until such time as it is deemed by health officials to be safe for them to reopen to students and staff and for classes to resume. And we don't know when that will be. We will not tie ourselves to an arbitrary date, knowing full well that this emergency may not be abated by the time that date arrives. I will not, we will not put students, educators, and staff and their families at risk. We will do this the right way, the responsible way. The directive, and many have asked us about this, covers all public, private, and parochial schools from pre-K to grade 12. And all colleges and universities will have to cease in-person instruction as well. Many districts and institutions of higher education had preemptively announced closures of at least two weeks. We all need to prepare for the likelihood that it will, in fact, be much longer. And in fact, CDC guidance points us all to that likelihood. Again, I want to thank and reiterate my thanks to the educational leaders from around the state, up and down the state, who have worked with Commissioner Repolette and Secretary Smith Ellis and their teams, and with me and my team as we advance toward this inevitable decision. Their input was vital to ensuring we landed in the right place. We are confident that both the overall education or educational and individualized needs of students, including access to free and reduced meals, will be met during this closure. However, I am keenly aware that closing schools is not the only step we must take to ensure that people aren't congregating in places where coronavirus can easily spread. As was said this morning on the call I held with New York Governor Andrew Cuomo and Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont, we need to act regionally and cooperatively and decisively. The actions I am taking are mirrored in many respects across our three states. And if, in addition to that, I spoke with Governor Wolf not only uh, over the weekend but a short while ago today of Pennsylvania, and I'm pleased to share that Pennsylvania will also be joining our regional efforts and taking similar steps to the ones I am announcing. So here goes in some other steps. All non-essential and non-emergency travel in New Jersey is strongly discouraged between the hours of 8 p.m. and 5 p.m. daily, effective this evening at 8 p.m., until further notice. To be clear, and I think I may have contributed to this uh, confusion over the weekend, this is not a curfew, but it is strongly recommended and travel is strongly discouraged. But if you don't need to be on the roads, you should not be on the roads. If, alternatively, you are a healthcare worker or other employee essential to our response, we still need you to get to work and to the vital jobs you are doing. And from the bottom of our hearts, we thank you and recognize that you are the front lines in this fight. But for those who do not need to be out, please, please, please just stay home. Businesses, which play a direct role in our response efforts or are necessary for the public's health, safety, and welfare, such as supermarkets and grocery stores, pharmacies, medical offices, and gas stations, among a very limited list, those entities may remain open past 8 p.m. All casinos, racetracks, movie theaters, performing arts centers, nightclubs, gyms, and fitness centers and classes will also close entirely, effective at 8 p.m. this evening until such time that it is deemed safe for their reopening. Again, I repeat, casinos, racetracks, movie theaters, performing arts centers, nightclubs, gyms, and fitness centers and classes, all will close entirely, effective 8 p.m. tonight, until such time that it is deemed safe for their reopening. Good news is online gaming will continue. Bad news is not much to wager on. All other 
non-essential retail, recreational, and entertainment businesses must close at 8 p.m. every day beginning this evening at 8 p.m. And during business hours or daytime hours, businesses may remain open, but only if they limit their occupancy to no more than 50 persons and adhere to social distancing guidelines. Again, I want to repeat this. All other non-essential retail, recreational, and entertainment businesses must close by 8 p.m. every day beginning today. And in addition, during daytime hours, those businesses may remain open if they limit their occupancy to no more than 50 persons and they adhere to the six-foot and other social distancing guidelines. All bars and restaurants are closed for eat-in services effective 8 p.m. this evening until further notice. After 8 p.m. and until further notice, these establishments may open for takeout and delivery orders only. These restrictions will be in place during daytime as well. Again, I repeat just because I want to make sure there's no confusion. All bars and restaurants are closed for eat-in services in the entirety of New Jersey, effective 8 p.m. this evening until further notice. After 8 p.m., not just this evening, but other evenings, and until further notice, these establishments may be open for takeout and delivery orders only. And these restrictions will be in place during New daytime Jersey. hours New Jersey, as well. Andrew. As a general matter, all gatherings of 50 or more persons are canceled effective 8 p.m. tonight with very limited exceptions. And frankly, if you ask me about an exception, I'm not sure I've got a good answer for you. Uh, but any gatherings of 50 or more are canceled effective tonight. I think you may have seen this already, but want to reiterate that the Motor Vehicle Commission has closed all offices and inspection statements, uh, stations rather, for the next two weeks at least. As Michelle, was previously announced, all licenses gonna, and non-driver IDs, registrations and inspections expiring by May 31st are exp extended by two months. We encourage everyone who can utilize the MVC's online, online capabilities to do so. Additionally, and uh, General Beal will discuss this, as of today, I am mobilizing the New Jersey National Guard to assist in our efforts in any way necessary. And again, Brigadier General Beal will speak to this in a few moments. We do not take any of these steps lightly. We know that each comes with its own set of impacts on residents in families, on communities, and on local businesses. But at this moment, our paramount concern must be to flatten the curve of new cases so we do not overload our health care system. We all must take seriously the need for social distancing that can help slow the spread of coronavirus. We need everyone, no, frankly, no, to stay borders. home. And most Let states are taking these clear. same steps. It was very obvious from what we all saw over the weekend that not enough New Jerseyans are taking to heart the need for social distancing. Okay, let me, I'm just going to pause it for a second. This governor is basically just saying, we want to stop the spread. We want to try to control the amount of people who get infected. This is a great measure to take, the social distancing the closing of businesses, even if it's temporary uh, or even if it is for 30 days. They're talking about two weeks. So at the end of the day, folks, this is for our protection, and this is a good thing. Uh, this is not Armageddon. This is not the end of the world. This is just like we're just bunkering down for a short period of time to try to stop mass spreading like what happened over in China so you're not talking about hundreds of thousands of cases. This is this will just slow it down. This is not going to stop it, but this is not the end of the world, ladies and gentlemen. There's no reason to go out and buy as much products, toilet paper, hand sanitizer. All of that stuff is going to be available. We need to just have a calmer, calmer. Uh, everyone has to calm down and just realize that, hey, this is for our own good. The, the governors, the mayors, the 
small town leaders, if they're enacting businesses to be closed down, it's for our own protection. And that's how you have to look at it. You know, you're not going to go out and breathe the air and catch coronavirus. You know, it, it happens from in close contact with someone who is infected. So what they're saying is, is basically limit our contact, keep our social uh, socializing to a minimal for a short period of time to let this um let this virus not spread like wildfire. So I, I had to stop that because I, I see some people, uh, you know, there's no need to panic. If you have these underlying health conditions, uh, compromised immune system and uh, diabetes and all the listed compromised health uh, issues, then yes, you need to stay home. But for those of us who are, relatively healthy, we can go out and shop uh, for cl- uh, for food. We can go out and get gasoline in our cars. We will be able to go out and freely move about our country and our towns and our neighborhoods. This is not, they're not going to close borders. They're not going to put uh, curfews and people aren't going to get shot in the street if they're out after eight o'clock. This is something for our health benefit. President of the United States, the governors, the mayors, all of the elected officials are, are sending a message through the CDC from the healthcare professionals. And also the hospital workers, you have to realize you can't just go to the hospital if you're having heart palpitations because you have an anxiety attack. You need to just work it out, calm yourself down, Right now is not a time to go to an emergency room if you're having a panic attack. You need to be able to just work through it. If possible, stay home because you have more of a chance of getting this coronavirus if you go to a hospital. And if you didn't have it and you go there, your your risk, the percentage goes up so high. So they're trying to they're trying to keep people away from the hospitals unless you are deathly ill. Uh, And my recommendation is to uh, stay away from the hospitals unless it's completely, completely necessary. Uh, And that's my uh, that's my uh, opinion from a law enforcement professional. So let's let the rest of this play. That is absolutely vital to our flatlining the curve and keeping ahead of this public health emergency. There is no reason that anyone should run the risk of infecting friends and loved ones or their community, especially those who may be most vulnerable to coronavirus. I know, I'm a Murphy, by the way, guilty as charged. I know people wanted to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, but absolutely no one should even been considering going out to a bar. Even if you feel completely healthy, still be a carrier of coronavirus. There will be another St. Patrick's Day next year. Sitting this one out could mean the difference for you or someone you love to actually making it to then. Hello, Cup of Joe. Our New Jersey family is too precious. We all must play our part to win this fight against coronavirus and emerge stronger than ever. This is not a time for selfishness. This is a time to think of those around you. Dr. Tan, welcome. To every New Jerseyan, who has already taken personal responsibility to heart during this emergency, and there are millions of you, I thank you. And I urge you to continue doing what yes, you're doing. open the windows. To keep it's being mine. a model for others who may need a wake-up call. Folks, um, a couple of extemporaneous comments. We need to put... Just as, I, just as I have said and will continue to say, this is no, no time to panic. It still is no time to panic. It's time for smart, intelligent, aggressive, proaction, Listen proactive up. action. Listen up, folks. And just as that is true, it is equally as true, this is not time for business as usual. The amount of anecdotes who may need a wake-up call. Folks, um, a couple of extemporaneous comments. 
we need to put just as I just as I have said Listen and will to continue this, to say this is no no time to panic it still is no time to panic it's time for smart intelligent aggressive proaction proactive action and just as that is true it is equally as true this is not time for business as usual the amount of anecdotes that we get everything on one end from bars you literally can't get into over the weekend to not one single roll of toilet paper left in the entire state we got to bring radically dramatically and immediately that behavior on both ends into a more equitable, more reasonable, more rational reality. We can't allow the business as usual culture to continue. Clearly, as I said, this does not come without a price. It will come with a big economic price. We understand that. If we do not act, the price will only be larger, both in humanity as well as economically. So there are some people out think this is fake news and our friends the Russians I'm sure are feeding that notion this is not fake news this is real on behalf of all of us is if we don't have this right if we're not accurate about this, this it's on president. me this is real stop believing folks who say it isn't real another bigger group of people who think that they're impenetrable that it's not going to affect them they're the fitness of the the, the picture of good health I would just say to you and each and every one of you out there, this is a challenge for each of us. Yes, while it to, to our young people and their parents. Pay attention, while here, guys. This in is fact, important. this is heavily skewed toward older members of our community, although Judy will give you the range of the ages of the new cases in a moment. You may be asymptomatic but carrying coronavirus. And think about that. You're cavalier, you're in a bar, you're in some big party in a house somewhere you feel really good and really healthy and then the next day you're going to see grandma and grandpa or your parents or a coach or an uncle and aunt or a teacher who may be more vulnerable who may have an underlying health issue and you unwittingly are putting their lives at risk we have got to put an end to this business as usual so to the folks who think this isn't real trust me it's real and it's on me if, if we prove this otherwise. And to those who think it can't affect them, I'm here to tell you it can. So just as it is not time to panic, but it is time to be smart, proactive, aggressive as we're being, it is equally not time for business as usual. I cannot overstate this. Before I conclude, I had the opportunity to speak directly a short while ago with President Trump and Vice President Pence, and I had spoken to the Vice President uh, on Friday evening. And again, we've been in regular contact with them and personally in their offices. In this case, an hour or two ago was the governor's video conference uh, that is normally held on Monday. The President, Vice President, and I also discussed that New Jersey is one of 12 states that will be standing up testing sites in conjunction with the federal government, and specific FEMA. Colonel Callahan will give additional details on this, I think, very positive development in a few minutes. On our call today, I pressed the president and vice president and their teams for more personal protective equipment for our frontline public health workers, for more on the ground assistance, a la the FEMA help in setting up for testing, and to prepare to support our businesses, our workers, and our economy. Okay, so uh, Governor Murphy is um, speaking clear and concise. He's taken charge. And I got to say, he's blowing away uh, Mayor de Blasio. He's blowing away uh, Governor Cuomo. Uh, this is hands down the best news conference I heard to date of all of the coronavirus news conferences. And I've, I've heard a lot. And I will say this, the, the people of New Jersey listening to this have to feel very confident that they have a competent authority that's not arguing with the President of the United States. I heard Governor Cuomo 
That's the governor of New York. And I heard Mayor de Blasio, that's the mayor of the largest city here on the Northeast, argue like little kids about where, 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 we're not getting this, we're not getting that. The president doesn't know what he's doing. This guy was professional, concise, and on point. And he was looking out for the people of his state, the people who elected him, the people who he represents. And I tip my cap to this guy because this is not a time to kick and scream like a baby. This is a time for us, as he said, to come together, join as one, come to a medium and come to uh, helping each other. This is not a time for disdain and arguments and disagreements. This is a time for all of us to look out for our brothers and our sisters, our neighbors, our aunts, our uncles, our family, strangers. We need to come together. Just the way I help people when they come and send me messages on email or direct messages and I speak with them, I'm, in, I'm trying to engage you guys to do the same thing. Help one another. If you know one of the ladies or gents out here is suffering or is, is going through some anxiety, extend that olive branch. Extend your hand out to them. I know that most of you do this. But if I reach one person that turns their back and says, hey, I got enough problems on my own. I can't help anybody else. This is not a time for gloating and bloating and uh, me, 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 me. This is a time for us. And this guy is sending that message with strength and leadership. This guy's sending that message with strength and leadership. And that's what our nation needs. We do not need to be conquered and divided because we are facing a silent killer that's out there that we can't see. And we need people like this, like this man, this elected official, Governor Murphy. Let's listen to the rest of what he's saying. When we come out of this emergency, which we inevitably will do, we will continue to push for necessary supplies, particularly so-called PPE, personal protective equipment, so long as there is an emergent need for them, and there is. Before I close, I must give our continued thanks to everyone out there whose work is helping our state stay safe, stay together. Public health workers, where would we be without you and your heroism? the janitorial and custodial workers, and the women and men working to keep our grocery stores open and stocked, to awesome, name just Mary. a few. Awesome. I also want to recognize the tremendous work of each of you in the media who are making sure that the people have the facts, and you're doing it because we're living it as well seven days a week. We tip our caps to everyone who's playing their role and seeing us through this unprecedented times. As I've said before, we are all in this together. We all have our jobs to do, beginning with including yours truly and assuming we all do our jobs. We take this seriously. We don't panic, but we realize it's no longer time for business as usual, and we do both the little things and the big things. Assuming we do all that, I could say unequivocally, we emerge from this stronger as one New Jersey family than ever before. And to all New Jerseyans, I wish you nothing but safety and good health. Let's do this together. It is my, now my honor to turn things over. And again, we'll have a series of speakers to the rock and great Lieutenant Governor of the great state of New Jersey, Sheila Oliver. Uh, thank you, Governor Murphy. Uh, I just uh, would like to the uh, citizens of New Jersey know, as well as the media, to let people know that the New Jersey Department of Community Affairs is, will continue to have its Network of service delivery. Okay, guys. <clears throat> so my point was made there. I'm, I'm not going to continue with that. Um, this is a governor who's leading his the great state of New Jersey, as he says it. Okay? He's a, definitely a class act, Dookie 4000. Uh, you say it definitely 
hundred percent, one hundred percent. Listen, folks, we have millions and millions of people in the United States. No, at no time, place, or even in anybody's wildest dream, would we ever have concocted or come up with something like this? We said this during September 11th. Uh, nobody would have ever predicted that the World Trade Center would have collapsed in front of my eyes and that the Pentagon would have gotten ta- attacked and that the, a plane would go down in Shanksville, but it happened. So we're reacting to a situation that is astronomical in numbers. And yes, people won't have what they need because we're only human beings. This is, we aren't machines. The government is not a machine. They're human beings, and we have to be patient. Not everybody is going to get what they need or what they want right away. But I could tell you this. We have a president in place that is on top of this. I'm confident, despite what you think of him or what anybody thinks of him, we all have our opinions, but we need to put that aside at this time. And what we need to do is have the federal government take that $850 billion dollars and put it into assets, put it into the testing that we need. Listen, we have Aaron Leahy, one of our, one of my moderators, one of my Patreon supporters, a channel member here who possibly has the coronavirus down in, in Georgia, and she can't get a test. They don't have them. I was on the phone with her talking back and forth in text message tonight, and she's sick as a dog. She has her parents coming over and leaving her food. And those of you who don't know who Erin Leahy is, her screen name is Jack's mom here. She more than likely has the coronavirus. But there's no testing in her area because she lives in a remote area. She's frightened to death to go to the hospital because they're telling her don't go to the hospital and she's, she thinks that she has more of a chance if she doesn't have it to get it by going to the hospital. So these are things that we need to correct, and the CDC and the federal government and the, you know, the White House, the presidents, all of the people he's assembled are working hard to get these kits out there, to get these test kits out there. Let me, um, let me get off of this. Hold on, guys. Let me get to you. Um, I want to show you a... Hold on, guys. This always happens to me. All right, here we go. All right. So this is a graph that I want to show you. This is uh, courtesy of Josher H. Thank you, Josh, for providing us with this. I wish there was a way I can get rid of this, but I can't. Can I? I can't. All right. So this is total confirmed coronavirus cases, almost 200,000 worldwide. And there's the website right up here. I'll put a link in the description. This lists country by country. Uh, 81,000 in China, 31,500 in Italy. Iran has 16,000 in change. Spain, 11,700. Germany, 9,200. South Korea, 8,300. I'm going down the list here, and here's the United States. So in the U.S., we have 6,362 cases. In January, I believe the 21st of January, this was a very small number. I think it was 21 cases January, or 20-something cases January 21st. We have total deaths, 108 in the the United States, only 17 have recovered. 17 out of 6,300. Those numbers will rise. These numbers will rise, folks. But the recovered numbers will rise as well. Let's take a look at China, where it first started. Total of 8,174 confirmed cases. 
3,241 deaths. But 69, almost 70,000 have recovered. So if you look at these numbers here, I'm not showing you this to make you get anxiety. I'm showing you this because this is good. I mean, you have 81,000 confirmed cases and almost 70,000 have recovered completely. The 3,200 deaths, most of them are people with underlying conditions who were sick already. Thank you for the blessings for Jack's mom. If you guys can put prayer emojis and hearts for Jack's mom in the chat, that would be great for her because I know for, I know I can bet my bottom dollar she'll watch this replay because she's uh, always up on the channel. She's probably sleeping right now. So for those of you who are panicking, look at these numbers. It, it, they are astronomical, but this was ground zero. This is where it started. 81,000 confirmed cases, 3,200 deaths. We don't like that, but almost 70,000 have recovered. That's, that's an impressive number. So thank you for those prayers for Jack's mom. Thank you. New York Dominican, great to have you. So go, those of you who are new, I am Duty Ron, retired New York City police detective. I did 20 years in the New York City Police Department as a police officer and as a, de as a detective. And we are covering the coronavirus uh, pandemic here. And we're, we're trying to keep ourselves informed, educated, sensible. You know, we're using common sense here. All right, let's look at Italy. Italy is the next country to uh, have a pandemic. They are on total lockdown, just as China is. But basically, guys, as far as China goes, there's very few new cases. It's basically has slowed down considerably. So uh, Italy, we're looking at 31,500 cases, 2,500 deaths, but almost 3,000 have recovered. Fully. Gemma's journey. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you for the super love. I appreciate that. Um, Iran has 16,169, 988 deaths, but 5,300, almost 5,400 have fully recovered. 11,826 11, for Spain. 533 casualties, and 1,028 fully recovered cases. Thank you, Gary. God bless you as well. Thank you. We're going to get to that. We're getting to that, Dookie. Germany, 9,257 cases, 24 deaths, 67 recovered. South Korea, 8,320. 80, 81 casualties, 1,400 recoveries. What the U.S. is trying to do is keep this number low. France is, uh, that's where Nabul lives, uh, ladies and gentlemen. France is shut down completely. 7,695 cases, 148 deaths, 12 recoveries. So our social distancing Urban Explorer, thank you for the super chat. Hey, brother, I have it, and it's not good. I'm dealing with it. Doing small things is a struggle. Everyone keeps safe. Urban Explorer, my my, I'm sending you positive vibes and strength. A lot of strength going out to you, my brother. Guys, if you're not yet following Urban Explorer, go follow him on his channel. He is fighting coronavirus as we speak, and he is a good friend of mine. I trust him. I know that his word is golden. So sending you prayers, sending you strength, Urban Explorer, my brother. Go and check out his channel. Support him. He needs it, ladies and gentlemen. He needs our support. If you're not subscribed to his channel, go over there and subscribe immediately or right after this broadcast. And he has a really cool channel. I, I check his stuff out all the time. All right, let's look at Switzerland. 2,700 cases. 27 casualties with 15 recovered. The UK is getting hit pretty hard. 1,960 cases, 72 deaths, 
66 on the recovery. And it goes on and on and on. This covers every country. If someone wants me to go over and cover their country, you let me know in the chat and I'll cover it. Thank you for subscribing to Urban Explorer. Bless you guys. Bless you. Let's see if they have... Um, what was I looking for? Wow. All right. So a lot of these countries have one case. Not bad. All right. I want to. I want to look at. Um, I want to look at the U.S. one more time because a bulk of my listeners are from the U.S. Here's the. Here's New York. Thirteen casualties in New York. Um, why isn't it giving me the breakdown? I was getting it before. California's got twelve casualties, six fifty-five in Washington, thirteen in New York, twelve. And then it just trickles down from there. Uh, but so we're trying to keep these numbers as low as possible. And by all of the good people out there, Sophia Howard, thank you so much for that super chat. Thank you for the super love. What, what the powers that be is trying to do is to keep the numbers low. And by social distancing, by uh, staying home voluntarily, you know, it's a time for us to catch up on certain things, maybe clean the house a little bit. I have my, um, I have a steamer mop and I have a lot of hard porous floors, you know, like uh, hard tile floors, uh, wood floors. I'm going to steam clean. This is what I'm going to do over the weekend because I know I'm going to be in all, all weekend. I'm going to um, steam clean my floors something that I wouldn't do on a normal urban explorer says I'm healthy, so I'll be fine. But I really fear for older people because I it's real. I'm overheating like crazy and making a cup of tea. I like running around. I like running around the block. Yeah. I mean, this puts you, it puts you on your butt, right? It knocks you back 50 cases in Minnesota. Let me see. All right. So I think I think we've we've covered this pretty well. I, I I mean I I'm I'm just saying there's no reason to panic here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let me see if I have something here. I thought I had one other thing. Okay, let's let anybody want to listen to New York's governor to see the difference. Erica Collins, welcome in. Prayers to everybody. Your house is spotless, says Michelle. Does anybody want to hear from the New York governor, uh, Cuomo? We'll listen to a little bit of it, and then I'm going to end it because I, I didn't want this to last an hour. So we're at 40 minutes. So I got 10 minutes. Let's listen to 10 minutes of this jagaloon. <sighs> okay, here we go. I love this new configuration. Less density. Uh, everybody knows everyone who's here. To my far right, James Malatris, president of the SUNY Empire State College. Uh, Dr. Howard Zucker, health commissioner. Melissa DeRosa, secretary of Korea, if it's Italy. Before, this is a national problem, and we need federal leadership. You look at the countries who have handled this. I don't care if it's China, South Korea, if it's Italy. They were all handled by national He's leadership. This is a national problem. Uh, it cannot be done in a piecemeal method. You need federal parameters to stop the national patchwork of density reduction closings. I did a few national uh, interviews this morning, and I was watching the national news. He's complaining about you Trump. You see already. a whole hodgepodge of efforts being taken across the country. This state is doing this. This state is doing I this. Agree, this John, city is doing but this. I don't want him to be bashed here. Uh, it's chaos. I'm just trying to show you a point uh, I think here. it actually fe it feeds the feeling 
that uh, the country's out of control. And there is no clear direction, and there is no clear path. California's doing this, New York is doing Okay, I'm going to stop it right there. Uh, I'm fucking so, this guy bloils my blood. This is my, uh, my, my governor. Do you see the difference between Governor Murphy, that's the next state over, we're tri-state, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. I listened to the Connecticut government, governor, and that was a good uh, talk too, but I'm not going to let you guys listen to all of this. But this is a stark contrast. He is instilling fear in people. This is a guy who is not representing his people. I'm going to let just a little bit more go. At Duty Ron, do you still love me? Of course, Emily. You're my first channel member. I love you. Uh, that's a silly question, Emily. Doing this. Illinois is doing this. Uh, it's the same problem across the country. The density may shift uh, temporarily, but it is the same problem. Let the federal government say, these are the guidelines. Here are the guidelines on schools. Here are the guidelines on Catherine, businesses. Welcome. Here are the guidelines it's on pleasure travel. To have you. Rather than having a scramble of uh, every local government, state government, trying to figure it out on its own. It makes no sense. It is also counterproductive. Because then what it does, it allows what I call state shopping. In other words, you don't like the rules in New York, well, then you go to Pennsylvania. You don't like what California is doing, no, maybe, then you no, can come to New all. York. That's the last thing you want. That is the last thing you want. But when you allow this pattern of disparate policies, that's exactly what you're driving. Uh, and look, I manage the state of New York. All the local governments in the state of New York must have the same policy. Why? Otherwise, we would be creating the same problem that the federal government is creating. You can't have Albany with one set of rules but Schenectady with a different set of rules and Rensselaer with another set of rules. Uh, people will be confused. And again, if you don't like the rule, you get in your car, you drive 15 minutes, you're in a different jurisdiction subject to a different set of rules. So in New York, you cannot shop New York City versus Westchester versus Nassau you, versus Thank Albany you. versus Schenectady. It's one set of rules for the entire state. And it should be, Bella, we are one be okay. set of rules for the entire nation. And that is the role of the federal government and national leadership. And it is lacking. Look at this. He's got the a federal PowerPoint. government it, should put got, one he has, he's position in place the president and coordinate it. With the states. He's trying to tell the federal government how to run. If the Jesus federal Christ. government isn't going to do what it should do, then the states have to try their best, right? Uh, and the best way is for me not only to have a uniform policy within the state of New York, but to the extent you can cooperate with surrounding states so you all have a common set of practices, right? Uh, I don't want to close down bars in New York, but Connecticut leaves the bars open. Why? Because then many people will get in their car and they'll drive to Connecticut to go to a bar, which is the last thing we want. Now we have people who are drinking and driving. Uh, it makes no sense. Uh, I don't want to have one set of rules here and a different set of rules in New Jersey because then I close down the bars, you'll get in the car, you'll drive to New Jersey. So there is no benefit to try to shop New York versus Connecticut versus New Jersey. L look, at, uh, look at this, what he has. Absence of federal action. 
I mean, this is a guy who's supposed to be looking out for us. And he is playing games with the White House, with the president. The president has the authority now under the Stratford Act of the National State of Emergency to release $50 billion. And now it's swelled up to, they're looking for $850 billion. And this guy is running an out, a 35 minute long press conference today dogging the federal government it, i mean if you're going out with somebody on a first date aren't you supposed to tell them that they're beautiful and wine and dine them so you can you know get to first base i i, I don't know he doesn't seem like he wants to get to first base he th this guy's a clown I, i'm just so shocked that he's doing this and, and i watched him do it yesterday he did the same thing yesterday. He had a Twitter battle with the president back and forth. And um, New York is a state that is, we have the most cases. It was Oregon and, and now it's New York. And, and he's not thinking about the people who voted him as governor. He represents all the citizens and all the residents of New York. And this guy There'll is be being no a clown. More. Uh, gatherings of 50 plus people so if you were hoping to plan a graduation party you can't do it in the state of New York you can't go do it in the state of New Jersey and you can't do it in the state of Connecticut yeah but Thomas uh, hold on casinos. a second <laughs> I love and when people just jump on the bandwagon I played before you showed up the governor of the state of New Jersey which was the polar opposite of this and he's a Democrat the governor of, of of New Jersey was a, a leader. He gave a speech and spoke to his people with confidence, with drive, with purpose. He wasn't dogging anything. This this guy is just for thirty six minutes. We all have casinos. If I close my casinos with New Jersey until further notice, any bar you can purchase. Uh, my kids are a little older, but I remember the old. I can't even listen minimum. to this guy. I can't listen to uh, him. Work from home, which is the same thing. I mean, uh, this is not an easy decision. There are negatives when you close a school. Most notably, you don't have child care for essential personnel. Uh, you don't have child care. Uh, our testing numbers are way up, as you'll see. Okay, so uh, now he comes but back it is to... strongly advised. And it's not mandatory at this time. Use Look at our this. laboratories, uh, our emergency management team. Look at this. Testing, uh, we have had a he... phenomenal increase this is shocking. in testing. We've been able to comes use back. our laboratories. This uh, is like telling somebody you suck and then come back and say, great mobilization. Thank you, Vice President Pence and President Trump. Our emergency management team has done a very good job of reaching out to our state exactly, labs. Getting Joni, them on exactly, Joni, exactly. Getting them coordinated. Uh, our testing numbers are way up. I'm not upset, see. Sophia. Uh, next week, uh, by the end of this week, we think we're going to be up to about 7,000 tests per day, which is an exponential. Uh, they take the beds right. <laughs> that sit vacant for... All right, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to stop this right now. Uh, let's get you back to me and let's close it up. All right, guys, thank you for hanging out with me here tonight. I want to just say quickly before I close it up, you know, for those of you who are panicking, please, please take a deep breath. Look at the big picture. Keep yourself safe. You know, wash your hands. Keep social distancing. Take that very seriously. And when I say the social distancing, that means don't go to parties. Don't invite 20 people over to your house to watch movies. Hang out with somebody who you know and trust, your significant other. I'm keeping my family together, and we're not socializing with anybody for the next 
at least two weeks. The next two weeks, there's no socializing with anybody. We, If we want to socialize with someone, we're going to talk to them on the phone. We're going to tell them we love them. We're going to, you know, talk back and forth. If my mother-in-law needs something, she's 90 years old. If she does, we'll go and buy it for her and we'll leave it on her front steps. She has COPD and cannot breathe well. She's 90 years old. If she needs something, we'll go and bring it and we'll leave it on her steps. That's as close as we'll get to her. So at the end of the day, check on your neighbors, make the phone calls, but try to stay away. You know, <clears throat> this is no need to go and buy all the toilet paper, all the hand sanitizer, all of the supplies and food. You don't need to stock your refrigerator and all of your extra freezers and refrigerators. That is ridiculous. If you buy five gallons of milk, it's going to go to waste unless you're guzzling milk like, like it's going out of style. So at the end of the day, listen, go on to uh, the CDC website. It's got the best information, and I have it here. It's saved. I look at this two or three times a day. I want to I show you the CDC before I close. Uh, where the hell is it? It's right. Really? <laughs> I think I put it at the top. Okay. This happens to me every time I want to show you guys something. Okay, <clears throat> so I have it up. It's right here. I, I, I had it saved at the top, but I, I, I put it in the middle. So go to the CDC website. Here it is. I'll show it to you right now. And it'll give you the most updated coronavirus. How to protect yourself. I went through this once before with you guys, but it's a chock full of good information Go on there, uh, avoid close contact, clean your hands often, take steps to protect others, stay home if you're sick, cover coughs and sneezes, wear a face mask. It, this is all valid information. Don't get your information from some jagaloon on the internet. And I'm, I'm just saying there's tons of people that are doing live streams and putting out videos and doing podcasts about go and dig a hole and, and, and go into um, into a fallout shelter because the world's coming to an end. Don't listen to those people. Go to cdc.gov uh, and check out this coronavirus. It's giving you information on how to make disinfect, how to disinfect. Most common EPA registered household disinfectants will work. Options include diluting your household bleach to make a bleach solution, mix five tablespoons with a third a cup of a bleach per gallon of water. There's, there's a chock full of information. There's even videos on how to wash your freaking hands. Come on now. But I check this site two, three times a day. Here, there's a drop down right here. If you're sick, what, what to do? You know, what to do if you're sick? You click on it and it gives you. Call your doctor if you think you've been exposed, developing fevers and symptoms such as cough or difficulty breathing. Call your health care provider for medical advice. Yes, Urban Explorer, very good. Stay the frig off Facebook. Facebook will freak you the F out. Think of Facebook as like just a tabloid trash. Just get, get away from it. So cdc.gov backslash coronavirus backslash 2019. That's the site. I'll link it down below in the description. Guys, a lot of love from my house to yours. I appreciate each and every one of you. If you need to speak or if you feel high anxiety, send me a message on dutyron.com. Follow me right here on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all one word, dutyron. I'll never put out bullcrap information. Go to my website, dutyron.com. You could send me uh, messages on dutyron.com. 
You can join my Facebook YouTube video share group, my Facebook police and crime chat group, and my Discord group. I want to tell you guys, there's over 100 people here. Join my my Discord group. It's a really good group. Uh, we talk freely in there. You can let your hair down. We can really speak, uh, you know, openly with dropping F-bombs and having a good old time. In the Discord group, it's a really good time. And Joshua H. is running basically most of that Discord group. Come on in, let your hair down, and talk amongst a lot of good people. There's no shitheads in there. I don't allow it. So much love and respect from my house to yours. Thank you for coming in. God bless America. God bless the world. And good night, folks from New York City. Stay calm, but stay educated. I will talk to you soon on the next one. Again, no more crime cases until further notice. We will only be covering coronavirus, this case, so we can keep everybody informed. I'll speak to you all on the next one. Thank you so much.